So we know we've got basically all the ingredients in the upper levels of the atmosphere. You can still see what's going on here. The, the concern for me right now is you see across Alabama, Georgia, even into South Carolina, we're starting to see clearing. And already, this is the uh, significant tornado parameter I'm going to turn on here. And this basically tells you that the potential for significant tornadoes is really cranking up over Louisiana, Mississippi, into Alabama. That is forecasted to shift east and build over all of the southeast as we go through the evening. If you look at bulk wind shear, um, everything in that dark purple is above... Uh, 35 to 40 knots. It's probably closer to 70 knots. Look at some of the soundings down here, which is just off the charts. And then you look at helicity. Helicity is just a way of rotation. It's a wind shear parameter that tells me how much the, the air is going to twist once we get an updraft going. And uh, you can see it's off the charts. Above 300, in some cases, four, five, six hundred. Um, meters per squared per second. So just unbelievable parameters coming together. And when you look at um, some of the other parameters on our future cast, this is CAPE, which stands for Convective Available Potential Energy. It's basically gasoline or fuel for thunderstorms. And look how this surges up ahead of our main line of storms tonight through tomorrow morning. So even with loss of heating, we don't really have to worry about that. We are going to see storms go all night. They did last night. It's not going to take much to keep these things going. When you take a look at our future cast, some really interesting features show up to me when I start playing this. Look at the line evolving. This is our future radar. And you look at this, it's really not a line. There's a lot of individual supercells here. And in some cases, even on our future cast, we're getting indications of rotation on, on the model data. I mean, it looks like there's hooks developing in some of these as they're moving in. So this is my concern as we go into the overnight hours. I mean, this is 6Z, which is essentially getting towards midnight tonight. And after you go into the early morning hours, uh, we still got this line and they're individual cells. So what's likely going to happen is we're going to see waves of thunderstorms move through the area and all of them could be rotating with tornadoes and straight line winds. If you look at the forecast soundings from the Ruck model, this is the Buffkit um, software. The one thing that sticks out to me is this hodograph. This hodograph is a 2D or two-dimensional rendering of the wind shear in the atmosphere. Each one of these dots is connected to a wind vector. And, and basically when I look at this, I see this sickle shape to it. That's a lot of twisting of the winds. And if you look down in the corner here, um, look at the wind barbs. The wind barbs at the surface are coming out of the southeast at the surface. At about 1,000 to 2,000 feet, they're coming out of the south. That's our low-level jet. And then you get up around five, four, five, six, seven, eight thousand 8,000 feet. They're coming out of the southwest, and they're cranking. And as we go into the overnight hours, you really see that wind shear and that sickle shape stay with us in the hodograph and basically all this is in you know in layman's terms means we have the potential for tornadic thunderstorms to move in during the overnight hours so I don't often do this I don't like giving out timelines in this situation because it's gonna come in waves and I don't want people to sit there and look at their watch and say, oh I'm okay Brad said it's okay until this time and I'm okay after that time that's not the case today at any time between this moment right now that you're watching us until tomorrow morning when that front moves through the potential is there. Tornadoes, straight line winds. We could have a combination of a derecho, which has 80 to 100 mile an hour winds with any kind of Boeing segments, and then rotating thunderstorms, rotating supercells and tornadoes. So I don't want to let your guard down. This is about as serious as it gets. Very similar setup to what we had on the 16th in North Carolina. The difference is this is going to be a little bit different from a timing standpoint into the overnight hours, into the morning hours. So I mean, there's still a chance things could weaken, but I'm just seeing so many parameters come together. You need to pay attention to the warning. So go ahead, click on the link I put below this video. That's to a previous blog post. It has all the information about where you need to get information from, from my Twitter feed, Facebook, and from your phone. Make, make sure your phone is charged up tonight. It's going to come in handy. I send out warnings immediately on Twitter. So I want you to take this seriously. I'll have more information starting today at 4 o'clock on News Channel 36. And, of course, you can stay up to date on my Twitter feed and my Facebook page as well as WCNC.com.